Coach, thank you for uh, taking some time to talk with us. Appreciate it. Um, I guess can we start talking about just Drew as a player? What it's like to coach uh, somebody with his abilities and what he brings to the football field? Well, I mean, TJ, number one, when you have someone that has a, a talent that's already built in and instilled in them, what you want to see is that they're going above and beyond and taking that talent to the next level. And that's one of the things that Drew Barker does um, that a lot of guys don't have an understanding about what to do when you do have that talent. He's a student of the game. Uh, he's a tireless worker in film study. <clears throat> um, he logs in a ton of time um, watching video on the internet. We have that capability here where he can go home. Um, he comes in after practice and watches film with myself and our quarterback coach. Um, and, and he wants to get better. Uh, practice time, there, there's never a downtime for him. If we're at practice and we're doing some type of special teams drill or something and he's not involved, he's over doing something extra. So he gets the part of it to take himself to the next level. And I think that's one of the most intriguing parts about him is, is that he understands what he needs to do to be that great player. How important is that, not only as being a great player already, uh, being talented, but being a leader? Playing a quarterback's a position where it's usually the leader of the team. How important is that you see his teammates feed off of kind of that mentality of let's all get better together? Well, I mean, it's huge. It's huge from this standpoint. Um, the, the guys look up to him, and, and there's a lot of pressure on him. That's one of the biggest things that, that I like about him is that he can handle that pressure um, because you know everybody's eyes are on him. They're always looking at him, wondering if he's going to make a mistake, how he's going to respond, and how he's going to reply to that. The leadership part of it, um, he leads in two ways. Number one, by example, in his work ethic. Um, that, that's the biggest one to me. Um, verbally, he, he's also involved in everything that we do. He wants to encourage the guys. He wants to get the guys going. And, and our players respond. They want to take their level to the next level. Taking all that in is something that he's done a very good job with of not to get what I call the big head. Um, and that's what everybody's looking for, for a guy like Drew to do is can he handle that and can he overcome that, especially going into his senior year. And I think he'll do a great job with it. We talk about it and, and talk about him staying grounded and appreciating the things that he needs to. What, as he gets ready for the senior year, <clears throat> what are the things you want to see him approve, improve upon or kind of what are the goals you've laid out for him for next season to help the program and kind of prepare himself better for college? Well, we met after the season was over. I meet with all my guys, and, and, and we came in and sat down. And some of the things that I put on him was to ask him what he wanted to do. Um, and the number one thing he wanted to do was to step up his leadership. You can never be uh, have too much leadership. Um, he was a captain as a junior, voted on by our team. Um, so. He, one of the things that he wants to do is, is get better at that. The next thing he wants to do is, is increase his speed. He's going to some speed gr drills this, this offseason to get faster um, and then just to, to win a state championship. That's his number one goal. Um, from my perspective with him is, is his checks. We can never have him doing enough checks, getting us in the right spots. Um, last year he checked about 45 to 50 percent of the time. Um, he had a great percentage in terms of his checks. Um, but with our offense and what we do, our quarterback runs the show. Um, if I can say, Drew, you're going to call it this series, this first quarter, um, that's what we want to be able to do, and that's what you have to do when it comes to film study. All coaches probably dream of coaching somebody with great talent, things like that. Is there a pressure as a coach that comes with that to say, you know what, I want to make sure I'm maximizing his abilities or using the right way. Is there like an added pressure that comes with coaching a great player like that too? Not from my perspective. You know, Drew and I ha have a great understanding and that's one of the things that I've told him throughout this whole process. This is about you, not me. It's not about anyone but you. And, and I'm not going to get involved unless you want me to get involved. I'll position the coaches when they come in, let them talk to you. But this is your decision and not mine. Uh, so from my standpoint, there's no pressure when it comes to him. Sure, there's pressure when it comes to winning. This, that's what we get paid to do. You know, so you have to do the things to make sure they're in the right situation and get them going in the right direction. But in terms of that, I, no, I don't. I think it's awesome. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for him. Uh, it's a great opportunity for our program. We've gotten great exposure. Um, and we're going to be able to do some things that we haven't been able to do. Had that recruiting process, how much has it, uh, you know, what's it been like as it's picked up and as he's getting closer? I know he's not a new, like he didn't just popped up as a great player, but what, what's that whole process been like of getting these coaches in and things like that? Well, I mean, number one, if I was a young person, I don't know how I'd handle it. Right. Um, you know, the, the technology part of it, uh, the, the tweets, the, the Facebook, the Instagram, you know, I know what they all are, but in terms of functioning them and staying on top of them, I would struggle because that's not my era. Um, he does a great job with handling it. Um, sometimes it, I, I would feel like it would get overwhelming. Um, it gets overwhelming a little bit for me, and I'm just a small part of it, and I take a lot of phone calls because obviously right now he cannot 
take phone calls, but he can make phone calls. So, you know, I take phone calls. I'm kind of the go-between on some of the things with other coaches. You know, what's Drew thinking? What's going on with Drew? And, you know, sometimes I just sit back and say, hey, you know what? That's his decision, not mine. You know, we talk about it sometimes, but, you know, if he comes to me and wants to talk about it, we'll talk about it. But other than that, I try to stay out of it as much as I can. How much has the, the contact from Kentucky changed uh, with the new staff that's come in? Has it has it, you seen a big jump in, in how involved they've been in his recruitment? Well, I mean, no doubt. As soon as they got the job, the, you know, one of the first people that they contacted was me. You know, and, and uh, Coach Brown has done a great job. Coach Schlarman has done a great job. Coach Stoops has done a great job. You know, they... Um, the previous staff, you know, it, he wasn't one of their high guys. They, they didn't see him as a priority, you know, and that's the way it goes. Um, but the new staff feels like he fits into their system. He, they feel like he's a guy that they can take them to the next level and do some things. And when you got a guy that's an hour away, um, he's the number three rated quarterback in the nation, um, I don't know what systems he doesn't fit into. So they've done an awesome job staying in contact with us, building a relationship with myself, um, John and I have had a history of relationships, so you know it, it, they've done an excellent job, I think, in continuing the recruiting, and also so is Louisville. If, if you, I know you don't get involved in the process, but um, take schools out of it, but just a situation where you say Drew would be best fit, and maybe not an offense, but just like an environment, the, the things that as a young man make him successful, whether it's you know uh, like a family environment, you know things like that. When he gets to college, things that, that would help him be successful. Uh, what were the things that he would be comfortable with? You well, I mean, I think, number one, he's got to be comfortable with the staff. Um, as much time as these guys put in, I coached in college for eight years, so I understand as much time as they put in with those guys, you have to have a good relationship, and especially at the quarterback spot. If you don't have a good relationship with the staff, um, then there's going to be some problems, and I think that's what Drew's looking for. He's trying to find the place where he feels that he's going to be the perfect fit from a staff situation. Then, obviously, everything else goes involved with it in terms of what play he wants to be, what ability, and where he wants to be. So, And the way his style is, I don't think there's anywhere in the country that he can't fit in because he can adjust. He can be your zone read type guy. He can be your drop back passer guy. He can hand it off in an I formation. You know, So he's going to fit whatever schools are recruiting him, and that's why you see the list is so broad. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys.